Hi, my name is Heather and I am an NT dating an Aspie man. Um, today's topic that I want to talk about is the Cassandra effect. And the Cassandra effect is the way that women usually feel who are in a long-term relationship or married to a man with Asperger's. And what that means is that typically a lot of relationships end up in divorce or they break up because the wife usually ends up feeling resentment and anger that she is not as big of a priority or as important to her husband as she should be. And this is something that is really important to me because I really want to do everything that I can to keep my relationship from ever becoming there. And um, while I cannot speak from someone who has been in a 10 year long relationship with him, we're still in the dating aspect of our relationship. but. This is something that I do want to talk about. Um, one thing that I feel probably many women who are in these relationships do, and I can't speak from everybody, but I know I have worked with um, people with autism their entire life. So I, I this is one rule that I know. No matter how long you've been with somebody, no matter how many times you have talked to somebody about a specific topic, when they are on the autistic spectrum, you have to expect and understand that every single time that you talk to them about something that is bothering you, you have to come with a loving, compassionate, understanding tone of voice as if it's the first time you're talking about it. And you cannot expect somebody with Asperger's to just remember that you've talked about this topic 500 times. For my experience, uh, Jay gets really, really focused on hunting. He is extremely passionate about hunting and he will spend so much time researching places and and researching different kinds of guns and weapons and archery and he has a whole spreadsheet of uh, every single day of the hunting season and um, what is in season for every single day and what where he can hunt I mean it, it is crazy how much time he's put into this and when I try and say hey I want to spend time with you hey we haven't really spent much one-on-one -on -one time because that's my love language uh, he can sometimes get very defensive and it's like he has the nerve to say well I just don't have time I don't have time I, I, I'm too busy I don't have time to spend time with you I can't just sit around texting you all day I can't just sit around cuddling and doing nothing I've got these things I got to do and something about people with Asperger's that I'm learning something that I am learning a lot about uh, dating somebody with Asperger's is that he is constantly driven by this to-do list to be productive. He always has this whole list of things he feels like he needs to do, things he wants to do, feels like he needs to get done. And if he's just sitting around doing nothing or AKA spending time with me, he's not being productive and he's wasting his day. And he will literally get mad at himself. He will feel depressed and upset that he didn't get anything done that day. And to me, that can really hurt my feelings because I'm like, wait a minute, so spending time with me doesn't matter to you? More important than reading this book or doing this? or I mean, it just seems ridiculous. It's, it seems like the priorities are so mixed up. But there is something uh, biological, I think, in his brain that he constantly feels driven, like this need he can't sit still. And I... Uh, so it is hard for him sometimes to sit down and spend time with me because he feels guilty. So I have to come at a very understanding patience every single time. And I have to gently remind him and say, honey, I know that that is important to you. I know that this is something that you like to do, but our relationship should be more of a priority and we need to spend time together. And sometimes that means compromising. Sometimes, a lot of times actually, this means that I say, why don't you do what you want to do until eight o'clock? And then at eight o'clock for the rest of the night, it's just you and me, no interruptions. Or sometimes it's, we'll do what I want to do for two or three hours and then he can read his book or he can go do something that he wants to do. And 
when he realizes that I'm not going to take up his entire day, he's much more willing to compromise to be like, okay, that I can do that. Fine. I understand that. And I have to come in a very loving tone, uh, low, low tone perspective and be loving and understanding. And, and you have to realize if you're dating somebody on the, the spectrum, you cannot expect them to remember a conversation that you had 20 times before that you had 500 times before. I don't care if you've been together 15 years and you have had that same conversation 800 times. You have to remind them and, and at least for Jay, he does remember, he remembers. Okay. We're talking about this, but you have to remind him, um, remember this thing. Remember, this is important. We need to do this. I need to be, you know, I need some of your time and attention and it makes me feel so good when you spend time with me. It makes me feel whole and loved and it, it makes me feel close to you. And I have to uh, tell him how it makes me feel because feelings is not something that he's really that prone to. He doesn't understand feelings the same way that I do. So when I put it out in that way, that when we are in the same room together and you're on the computer and I'm doing my homework because I'm in college, I do not feel love to him. He's like, but we've been hanging out all day together. How can you say we haven't spent time together? And I'm like, are, are you crazy? You know, but I have to just simply say, I don't feel love. I enjoy when we do this together, but I don't feel love. What makes me feel loved is when you are right next to me, when I'm in your arms, when we're being intimate, when we are just cuddling, whatever, you know, that is what fills my love tank. And that's what I need from you. And when I say that to him and I make it very simple, very easy, he's much more willing and understanding. Okay. I love you. You know, well, he doesn't say he loves me, but you know what I mean? he's more willing to, to do what I'm asking. And so this is what I say to the people out there who are in this relationship, in this, in this position. If you choose to stay in this relationship, if you're choosing to make that commitment, then you have to accept him as if he was, ex as if he was diagnosed yesterday. You have to accept him with Asperger's today, tomorrow, next week, next year, 10 years from now, you cannot suddenly one day get mad and become resentful and say, well, we've had this conversation, you know, 623 times. I'm sick and tired of having this conversation by now. You should just know, you should just get it. You should just know me by now. This is what I expect from you. It does not work that way. And any parents out there who possibly have an autistic child know this, you can have the same routine. You can have the same things and you're still going to have to guide that kid. You're still going to have to remind them. You're still going to have to, okay, it's time for bed. Okay. It's time for this. Okay. This is what we're going to do. It's a constant kind of reminder. And if you can let the resentment go and just accept that, that's just part of the diagnosis. They can't help it. This is who they are. It takes away a lot of that anger and that resentment, and it makes you more compassionate and loving. So that is my advice. I don't want to make this video too much longer, but, um, for all of you out there who is pressing on, who's choosing to love your Aspie, I encourage you, love them, show them love, tell them you love them, and be compassionate and be understanding. And your relationship will take you to further lengths than it probably will have ever taken you with a different person. So, good luck. Like and just like and subscribe to this channel. If you like this, please hit the like button. Um, and I will hope to see you in the next video.